Hey guys, it's Gaster here again. Welcome to another video review. So today I'll be reviewing the Munich Now 7000. So this is their new uh, gaming mouse along with the Avier 7000. It's been out for like six to nine months, but this is the first time I've gotten my hands on it. And first impressions are quite good. So on to the price. It is priced at $80 US or, or at 80 euros. So $80 is relatively expensive, for, but for what you're getting for, for the sense performance and just the overall build quality, it is quite worthwhile. So just in general specifications, it uses arm on switches. Uh, it's rated for 70 k dp uh, cp dpi however uh, natively it's only a uh, 5k as a soft uh, touch rubber coating as seven program buttons three step uh, in-game dpi switching color shift with the uh, lighting and 6.8 million lighting so that's uh, very nice in terms of weight it is a relatively uh, not too heavy mouse for the fact that it is ergonomic mouse uh, weighs at 103 grams this is unofficial this is the their uh, measurements 103 grams without the cable and 147 grams with the cable uh, in terms of dimensions it is 130 by 84 by 72 millimeters so it is a fairly uh, mid-sized uh, mouse even though it's quite ergonomic um, however uh, it, it's it's I don't think it's a very large mouse in fact even though my hand is 19 centimeters from the tip to the base however this is uh, extremely extremely comfortable even for people who have larger hands this might even be like a fingertip grip to some extent but uh, so this is just something to be in mind so uh, in terms of the shape it does take on the form factor of a very ergonomic baseball glove kind of style. Uh, it's very similar to the CubeHat 5K, especially the Ikari uh, optical or Ikari laser if you've ever used it. So in terms of the shape, uh, on the left hand side, it is quite um, uh, it is really quite steep with the thumb. This is for right handers obviously, not for left handers. For the thumb side, uh, the side to the part to rest your thumb, it's not very large. So you, I do find myself kind of gripping it, claw gripping, just to uh, get a grip for the thumb area. And you can see this, these pictures here, it is quite a steep uh, right hand side grip. On the left hand side, there's a really nice a large area for your fourth finger and your fifth finger to rest on. This is very, very similar to the Ikari, so if you like the Ikari, you'd absolutely love this uh, ergonomic uh, Naos mouse. Um, in terms of the profile, it even though it is somewhat of a mid profile, but when I use it with my hands, it does feel quite low. Uh, I would say, like comparing, let's say, my Kana here, uh, it is... Uh, it is a very similar height in terms of high profile, at least in the subjective feeling of it, it is quite low. So that I do quite like that about it. Um, in terms of the size, uh, for my hands again, I, like I said before, 19 centimeters from the tip to the base. It's not extremely large, so it's a quite a comfortable uh, mid-sized ergonomic mouse. Uh, I know the IE3 is probably a little bit larger than my hands, but this feels uh, quite nicely. And definitely when I use it, uh, I do a lot of mobile gaming Dota 2, if you guys watch my other videos, and I get a really, really good grip because I can just uh, palm, I can, uh, the mouse rests nicely in the back of my palm for my, my hand and I can really move the mouse uh, quite nicely like left and right uh, with uh, like close uh, I guess usage. One thing I do like about this mouse when using it, it's very easy to pick up even though it's an ergonomic mouse. So when I kind of claw a little bit and put it against the, my back of my palm and I just move it a little bit, it moves, uh, it just sticks in my palm quite nicely even though the surface is kind of a, a soft rubbery surface, um, a soft rubbery matte surface. However, uh, I still enjoy, uh, I can still get very good control on this mouse. As compared to the Avier, uh, maybe I'll talk about that uh, in another review, but the control of that is actually not as good as the Nuz. So I really, really like the shape and definitely pretty awesome. In terms of the build quality, uh, Munich, uh, I'm really impressed with the quality that Munich have given us. Uh, in terms of switches, they use Omron 10mm switches. In terms of the uh, the overall just surface of it, it does use a rubber uh, coating, uh, a soft rubber coating they call it. Uh, it is a matte surface and it's very smooth on the skin. So uh, definitely it does not feel a coarse in any way. If you use the Rival, that kind of felt really icky. Even though it was smooth, it felt really icky. This one is just uh, very, very soft. And then once you on your skin, even dry or uh, sweaty hands, it would feel uh, very, very soft. Um, in terms of even if you sweat a little bit, it would not uh, cause that much damage to the surface. And I think uh, a little bit of sweat would actually be quite nice as well. Now moving on to the scroll wheel. So in terms of the scroll wheel, it is quite nice. It is quite light. Uh, however, you might scroll through like three or four uh, steps really, really quickly and not be able to control it. In fact, even if you do like one or two steps, uh, it's not too, that hard. It's not that easy to control, sorry. But it is, is quite light. However, it does stop quite easily uh, in the sense that once you scroll five, it just stops. Once you scroll five, it just stops. So it doesn't like keep on going on uh, in that sense. However, if you're scrolling a lot of uh, uh, steps, it is harder to control. However, if we're individual, like one, two, three, three, 
three steps. That uh, it is quite a nice light scroll. In terms of switches, I do use Omron switches, and uh, uh, they do feel slightly harder to click. Actually, somewhat like the. Uh, uh, Huano switch is actually, however, they, it feels lighter than that, but definitely heavier than maybe a uh, Kana, a uh, Kana V2, uh, in terms of the buttons. But they, they are almond switches, so if you've used them before and a lot of other mice, they should feel very comfortable in what, how you've been using them. Uh, let's moving on to the firmware. The firmware is quite nice as well. It comes with um, five profiles with adjustable memory. Uh, like I said before, um, there's a lot of things you can adjust with it. Macro recording, 16.8 million LED options. Uh, there are, is also an angle uh, snapping option and an angle tuning option and an LED calibration tool, which isn't really found in a lot of uh, optical mice. However, uh, this is really nice because you can calibrate your mouse to the surface and that's just a, a good uh, thing to have in general. So moving on to the performance lastly, which is the most important thing I guess because they did use the new Pixel Art 3310 uh, sensor which technically is rated at uh, a 5k DPI in terms of base specs but they they wrote it or they said it goes up to 7k and to my knowledge uh, the sensor actually only goes up to 5k in terms of the native steps and 7k since they interpolated. Uh, in terms of the max tracking speed it does go up to they claim 5 meters per second and I have absolutely I've not experienced any problems with that. There's no positive or negative hardware acceleration and they have adjustable liftoff distance uh, with the sensor as well. So in terms of the sensor, just uh, maybe such subjective performances compared to the 3090, uh, you could go up to higher DPI settings and still feel uh, uh, less uh, not that much jitter, not that much uh, kind of lag. However, there is a little bit of smoothing implement to it, but overall, the, the, the usage of the mouse feels extremely responsive and extremely smooth. Like, uh, I guess I'm, I'm quite impressed with the sensor, the 3D10 sensor. I've used the Bravo before, and this is just like the same sensor, but in another mouse. So, in terms of the sensor performance, it really uh, ranks up there. I'm um, now with the uh, Logitech G502 3D66 um, and the older, like, 3090 Avogadro ones. So, this is uh, should be an upgrade. However, even if you're using like low DPI 400, 800 DPI, you might not notice that big of a difference. However, I can say the performance is very smooth and responsive and definitely uh, there is no jitter uh, at lower DPI settings. So overall in conclusion, is this a good buy? Um, I'm really, really impressed with the build quality from Mianex. This is the first time I'm using Mianex products. So I really like how the, the form factor is kind of a Q-pad glove kind of thing. Uh, this really is up my alley because I really, really like the Akari, in fact. Uh, put in a new sensor, a uh, very nice soft rubbery touch uh, uh, grip uh, in terms of the uh, cover. And just overall, just really solid uh, made mouse. I've been playing this as my main driver uh, for Dota 2 recently. And it might just take over the Kana V2. Just might take over. Uh, I'm that impressed with this mouse. In terms of uh, $80 uh, US, it, it is still a fairly good mouse. Uh, for 80 euros, uh, I think it's a little bit expensive. But for 80 US, but in, especially in Hong Kong, it's so hard to get Mianex products. So I think if you do have a chance to get through Mass Drop or get it through whatever kind of group buy, it is worth getting. And even if you're US, I'll just order off the US store. So overall, a very solid product. Definitely recommend it. I'll be ruining the Avier and giving you my thoughts on that and also the Nash 20 headset from Mianex as well. So hope you guys enjoyed that video review and uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching guys.